This video was brought to you by NordVPN. In 2003, the EU and leaders of the Western Balkan countries met to announce the EU Western Balkans Forum, a project which was supposed to end with their accession into the EU. However, 20 years on, and the process has stalled. Ethnic tensions in the Western Balkans are rising, and the EU is suffering from a persistent case of enlargement fatigue. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at the EU Western Balkans accession talks, why they're stalling, and how both sides might break the impasse. With the exception of Croatia, who joined the Eurozone earlier this year, it's fair to say that accession talks between the EU and the Western Balkans, Montenegro, Serbia, the Republic of North Macedonia, Albania, Kosovo and Bosnia and Herzegovina, have been extremely slow. It's been 20 years now since the first summit on this issue, where the EU laid out the prospect of full EU membership for the Western Balkans. Back then, the question wasn't even if the region would join the EU, but when. However, we're now two decades on, and talks seem to be heading nowhere, much like Turkey-EU negotiations. As such, the region remains in limbo, caught between its post-conflict past and an uncertain European future, burdened by high unemployment and weak institutions. Frustrated by the slow speed of accession, Albania, North Macedonia and Serbia have even set up their very own scheme called the Open Balkan Initiative, which we actually made a video about a while ago. It's linked in the description. The TLDR of that plan, though, is that it's a mini Schengen area, or a mini EU, that aims to replicate the four freedoms of the EU, free movement of goods, capital, services and people, and eventually integrate other Western Balkan countries too, to demonstrate to the EU that the Western Balkans are indeed ready for a session. However, this initiative too also seems to have stalled, mainly due to the tense political situation in Kosovo. And the prognosis of this entire project is currently very unclear. Now, this drawn-out accession process is causing frustration on both sides, especially given that, well, EU membership is arguably better for both of their interests. For the Western Balkans, EU membership provides a potential framework for peace, and there are potentially some huge economic benefits, as demonstrated by the extraordinary economic growth enjoyed by EU countries like Estonia or Poland. For the EU, it's in the Union's interest for the Balkans to be peaceful and prosperous, and membership would help the Western Balkans steer clear of Russian and Chinese influence. So, given this, why hasn't more progress been made on this issue? But well, both sides are partly to blame. On the Western Balkan side, there's been a lack of progress concerning rule of law and their political institutions, especially freedom of expression. For example, in Serbia, articles in tabloid newspapers have been used to target and try to discredit members of the country's judiciary, in Albania, politicians have used online media to spread rumours and attack opposition figures. And this issue isn't getting much better. According to Transparency International and the World Bank, the Western Balkans have made little progress on this front in the last few years. And some countries, like Serbia and North Macedonia, have actually experienced backsliding. However, even if the Western Balkans had perfect institutions, a session would still be unlikely because, well, the EU just isn't really in the mood at the moment. The EU is already struggling to accommodate some of its existing newer members, like Hungary and Poland, and the bloc is suffering from what's often described as enlargement fatigue. Macron, for example, has vetoed any further expansion, on the grounds that further expansion might pose a threat to closer political integration, instead insisting that the EU needs to change certain things before accepting any more members. This includes reforms to both the European Parliament, like moving towards qualified majority voting for EU common foreign and security policy, and changes to the European Commission, like reforming the common agricultural policy. So, with ongoing and worsening issues in the Balkans, and some resistance from Europe, is there a solution to this impasse? 
Well, the EU's accession anxieties don't look likely to go away anytime soon. And the Union already has its hands full with Ukraine and its potential accession. Not to mention the Green New Deal, an independent security policy, and a general trend towards a more fiscal union. With that in mind, some analysts have even suggested that if the EU can't take the Western Balkans anytime soon, they should make this explicit and instead offer the Western Balkans a two-stage accession process. The first stage would essentially involve granting the region single market membership, either by granting the membership to the European Economic Area, which currently includes Norway, Iceland and Liechtenstein, or via a new Western Balkan European Economic Area. Regardless, this would still require the strengthening of the rule of law in the region, as all conditions relating to democracy, rule of law, and human rights still have to be met before a country can join Europe's single union. But if they were able to take this first step, then once the EU was ready for further enlargement, they could grant these nations full EU membership. And this two-stage strategy isn't all that unusual. In fact, in 1994, Finland, Sweden and Austria joined the European Economic Area, and then the EU a year later. For the Western Balkans, this process would almost certainly take longer than a year, but it could provide a nice middle way that brings the Western Balkans closer to the EU without triggering Europe's enlargement anxieties. Advocates for this strategy also argue that offering single market access might provide a better incentive for democratic reform and peace settlements in the region. Because unlike EU accession, it's a real possibility that it could happen in the very near future. This template could then be used for other candidate nations too, like Ukraine or Moldova. Now, obviously, this isn't a perfect solution. For starters, there's no guarantee that the EU will ever get over its enlargement fatigue. And there's also the risk that these bespoke arrangements could end up accidentally creating a sort of two-tier Europe, which many of the EU's smaller nations just wouldn't appreciate. Nonetheless, it would probably be a good idea for both sides to try and find a way through the current impasse, whatever that ends up looking like. A couple of years ago, I was a victim of identity theft, and I only found out when a letter from the court came through my door saying that I owed a bunch of money to a broadband company for an address I'd never even lived at. After a bunch of legal back and forth, I was forced to pay the money that I allegedly owed just to try and make the problem go away. But from then on, I was determined to make sure that I wasn't caught out again. And as such, I took a number of steps, including signing up for NordVPN. Now, you surely already know that NordVPN is the world's fastest virtual private network. But you might not know that they have a whole suite of threat protection features too. In fact, NordVPN's threat protection shields you from all kinds of dangerous things online, blocking malware, trackers, and malicious ads to help prevent you from falling victim to any of these scams or phishing attacks. Not only that, they also have a dark web monitoring service. So even if your data were to fall into the wrong hands, they'd scour the dark web to notify you when someone shares, leaks, or sells your details. Hopefully meaning that you'd find out what was going on before a court order lands on your doorstep. Now, ultimately, this isn't a fun thing to think about, but trust me, it's a whole lot less fun when it becomes a reality. Also, it's not just other people that this happens to. I hope you'll agree that I'm a reasonably smart person, and I did a computer science degree, and I still got got. So, click the link in the description or go to nordvpn.com forward slash TLDR to get a huge discount on their two-year plan. And with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you've got nothing to lose. So, thanks for your support and make sure you click the link in the description.